Hey, what's up, man? In today's video, what we're going to talk about is skin and improving your skin condition, removing acne. And as you can see, I've got a relatively clear forehead. Uh, I'm not the perfect example of amazing skin. You can see I get razor bumps when I when I shave or trim. Uh, however, I'm going to flash up on the screen here. Uh, what I used to look like when I was having skin problems and it's so bad that it'll it'll shock you <laughs> like like you oh this God. is like intense Jesus super Christ. embarrassing I, uh, I can't believe I, I had a girlfriend at the time and and Whoa, she didn't really dude. seem to mind or didn't show it uh, but I came from that and ended up where I'm at now which is uh, relatively clear skin on the forehead. You can see I've, I've got a little bit on my uh, shoulder, a little bit of acne, but for the most part, I'm pretty, I'm pretty clean. I got more hair than I got acne at this point. Uh, so I'm going to show you how I did that, you know, what my current skincare routine is and how you can clean up your skin too if you're experiencing something like hopefully not nearly as bad as what I was going through, but let's do it. All right, now first off, let's talk about how the heck I got to where I was in those photos. Like, why was it so bad? Because I'm sure you're curious. Well, one, I was playing around with anabolics. I was, uh, I'm not gonna demonetize myself, but you know where I'm going with that. Uh, there were some extracurriculars going on. Uh, two, I had just shaved my body pretty much for the first time. And I was taking uh, my girlfriend at the time's advice to use just water. I think that's what we did. So I used just water and one of those female uh, razors that has like, supposedly has the shaving cream built in. Um, so that mixed with the anabolics mixed with, I already had some cystic acne going on. So if, if you pop back into that video, you can see there's like uh, acne mixed with razor burn. And then like, I basically was like, running the razor over the cystic acne so that's why it got crazy i mean it sounds ridiculous looking back now moving forward how you can clear up your skin i feel like i'm quite an authority to talk about it because i did come from that and the recovery from that was quite difficult and the way that i got past that is the way that you'll get past you know some basic acne problems or maybe you've got cystic acne too so first off, you need to reduce the damage that's occurring, right? If you've got any type of acne, I think one of the biggest problems is not looking at it like it's this open wound, which it is. Like when you have acne and it's red, it's open, it's hurt, and you don't wanna start grinding. One of the biggest things that I used to do that doesn't work and I see a lot of people doing is you're taking those face washes or the body washes with the beads I forget what exfoliation beads and you're you're basically scraping open wounds with a hard bead right that that's not going to go well you think it's going to clean and cl uh, clean up the pores that's what the marketing tells you but think about it just a little common sense you're rubbing hard beads on an open wound and you're trying to heal that wound simultaneously skip that kind of stuff what works best is gentle toning cleansers like uh, I use Acne LXR, I'm not sponsored by the brand, no affiliate link. Acne LXR has a rose hip, uh, really mild cleanser. You've got to clean the skin, but you don't want to exfoliate it when you have opened acne wounds. You want to, you do have to clean it though. It's producing sebum, it's excreting sebum. You've got dirt on your skin, you've got a lot of sweat. If you're raising your testosterone uh, by training in the gym or even supplementing testosterone, you're gonna have even more of that, right? So you've gotta be cleaning it and you've gotta use some type of gentle cleanser, okay? So skip the whole exfoliation beads, do the foam cleansers. I recommend as least chemicals as you can have. Everyone's gonna tell you you need strong like salicylic acid, 10% benzoyl peroxide or whatever's in the, you know, the Cetaphil type stuff, the proactives. For me, that stuff didn't work. All it did was inflame it even more, aggravate my skin and cause more acne. So I recommend looking for something with like some rose hip, just do Acne LXR if you wanna use what I've used. I've been using it for, those photos were from a couple years back. So I've been using it for probably three years now, strong. And that's how I have clear skin now. 
That's how my back's pretty much cleared up. Now the next part to clearing up your skin, what worked for me is getting a lot of sunlight without sunscreen. Now, don't worry about getting skin cancer. <laughs> Who am I to tell you that? But if you look at the research, skin cancer seems to occur when you are getting sun exposure that leads to sun burning. Now, theoretically, of course, I'm not a skin doctor. Theoretically, if you expose your skin to sunlight and pull out before you start burning, you're gonna be okay and there's actually a lot of health benefits. I recommend you look into Dr. Mercola. Type in to Google Dr. Mercola and uh, sun exposure and he's got ebooks. He's got all this research compiled that's showing that raw skin in the sunlight is actually where you produce most of your vitamin D. You're gonna increase your longevity benefits, your longevity potential. You might even live longer by simply getting sun exposure every single day. Not burning, but raw skin sun exposure for a period of day just to kickstart some of your metabolic processes. It actually helps with your metabolism, breaking down nutrients and assimilating them. Also vitamin D production. It's great for brain health. There's a lot of benefits to actually getting sun. And when it comes to skin, nothing will burn up that bacteria and start to really improve your skin condition uh, more than getting a little bit of sun. I know this to be true because uh, I've moved back and forth from Dallas to San Diego several times. Every time I move up to San Diego, uh, my skin clears up a lot. And environmentally, uh, I mean, dietarily, nothing has changed. I don't change the way I'm eating. I simply am with my shirt off a lot more, getting a lot more sun, taking short walks around the block, uh, going to the beach sometimes. Nothing else changes except for that. And my skin literally always clears up. Whatever acne I have when I go out to San Diego, it'll just disappear. Now last, I'm sure you've heard plenty of dietary tips for reducing your acne. If you're watching this video, you've probably heard it all. I'll give you mine and I don't have science for these. I'm not the science guy, you know that, but I'll tell you what really worked for me. So one, I really noticed that coffee increases my acne. When I'm drinking coffee consistently, maybe this is partially because I'm drinking less water. Maybe it's coffee itself. Maybe I've got a sensitivity to it. Maybe it's caffeine itself. A lot of other people experience this too. I've looked it up on the forums. Coffee seems to accelerate acne growth and, and cause it for a lot of people. It might be subtle, but it seems to be happening to a lot of people. So try removing coffee or reducing coffee. If you're drinking four cups, try drinking one. If you can't seem to survive throughout your day without the caffeine, take some caffeine pills, but stick to one uh, cup of coffee. Try that out. I think it's the coffee itself more than the caffeine in my experience. Two, sugar seems to be the most acne causing thing out there when it comes to diet. I've tried uh, reducing dairy, I've tried reducing gluten, I've tried reducing all sorts of stuff. I think those directly affect acne as well, but I think sugar affects it the most. I will always break out a couple days later if I consume a whole thing of cookies or I'm pounding you know, my favorite donuts or something like that. Maybe it's the gluten, maybe it's the sugar, I don't know. You already know, if you eat crap, you're gonna break out, but I think that the crap you really need to watch out for is the sugar more so than the pizza or the hamburgers or the fries. That's just my experience and I've seen a lot of people online experience the same as well. Third, eating fish actually seems to reduce my acne a lot. It's probably the omega-3s and might be some of the other nutrients as well or it might be the fact that I'm eating less red meat which in my experience also seems to increase the acne. If I eat fish, the acne starts to go down. The clearest my skin has ever been in my life was when I was out in San Diego grilling fish by the pound, simply eating fish and some veggies, sprinkling some olive oil on it, getting a lot of sun and you know, living that type of lifestyle. That was the clearest skin my, I've ever had and there's something to that. Fish is amazing. Last but not least, water. Drink a bunch of it but not too much. I don't do well on a gallon plus. I'm just peeing too often. It interferes with my lifestyle and there's also some people online, uh, some doctors that'll tell you that you're expelling some of your nutrients if you're drinking too much water. If you're gonna do about a gallon, that seems fine. If you're around my body weight, which is about 210, 220 when I'm super jacked. Um, so if you're at that level, a gallon's probably appropriate. 
Otherwise, maybe go for three fourths of a gallon if you're, let's say 160 pounds ish and go up to a gallon if you start approaching 200 pounds. If you're doing a gallon and a half, it's excessive. If you're doing under a half gallon, you are probably severely dehydrated if you're doing any type of training. And if you're training, sweating, and you don't have enough water to facilitate that sweat, that detoxification process, and hydrate your cells properly, you're gonna have a buildup of toxins which will lead to acne. So if you're not getting at least a half a gallon, you're screwing up and you're uh, helping your acne survive. So those are the dietary tips. Those are my other tips. I really don't have anything else that I've used for acne. Like that's it. I don't do drugs. I don't do things that are more intense. It's just gentle foaming cleansers. Get some sun, drink some water avoid sugar, eat more fish, and that's probably it. So that's how I recovered from that crazy acne experience to where I'm at now, which I have some, but I consider what I have to be a normal level, especially for somebody supplementing testosterone and training hard in the gym, living a f relatively stressful lifestyle with work. Uh, I think I've got a normal amount. I'm comfortable with it. Nobody's weirded out by it. Uh, girls don't seem to mind, so I'm cool with it. And those are the tips. That's how I got here. So I hope you use them. And I really hope that if you're struggling with acne, you actually implement those, try them out. Give them about two to three months before you judge whether it's working or not. Also, stack them all together all at once and don't just try like one at a time. Just stack them, like go all in, try it all. <laughs>